Welcome back to another special video of the Hockey Nation Live Show. Today we talk about the winner and the loser of the NHL Draft 2021. Don't go nowhere. Welcome back. This is your hockey coach guru, Coach Frenchy, back in the booth today. Today we talk about the NHL Draft 2021. But before we start, we invite you, please don't forget to subscribe to the Hockey Nation Live Show on the Facebook page and the YouTube channel. And at the end of the video, please tell me your comments. Tell me what you think about my selection of the winner and the loser today. And if you like the video, please click on the like and I look forward to see you next video for you guys. So here we go. Let's dive in right there about the weekend of the NHL. You can see all the profile. We have there all the selection on the first round from Bernie to Power to Clark to Edvinson, Johnson, Hughes, Gwender, and McDavish. Just an amazing, great weekend for, for them, to be honest with you, to be a rookie and to get drafted, to hear their, their name at the first round. This is a great feeling, to be honest with you. So uh, let's dive in right away, and I will show up right here on, my, on your left corner. I will be there with you guys. So they are the winner and the loser of the NHL draft. And, the, and they are not by order. So I just want to mention this to you. And I'm going to delete this little corner on the, on the right. Uh, they are not by order. Like I said, it's just like the three team I believe they are. And I'm going to give you two extra teams where they are almost the winner. But I need to mention what the reason they are very close. I'm going to mention the reason why behind that. So let's dive in with the first team I'm talking about is the Columbus Blue Jackets. It's the weekend overall. Not only their picks, but what they did during the weekend is pretty amazing. They, re they rebuild and also they great, make a lot of great trade. First of all, they trade Zed Jones to the Chicago. That start like this Friday afternoon. And in return, they got a first round pick and bug this uh, for the Chicago. And then after that, during the, the first uh, late Friday night, I believe, or Sunday morning earlier, uh, they trade uh, with Carolina, and they get the, their defenseman, young defenseman, 23 years old, um, Bain, uh, Jake Bain with them. So that's really, really rebuild their, their structure of the defensive side with younger players. And finally, they trade their veteran Cam Atkinson to uh, Voracek, where I believe this one, I'm not really sure why he di they did that. But again, it's a one-to-one. -one. Voracek can be, be maybe helping more Patrick Laney to back, to back what is supposed to be Laney, but it would be very interesting about that. But we have to go about more what they did during the draft. They have three solid pick at the first round. We talk about um, Johnson, Ken Johnson, one of the power skill, talented player in that draft. He, he have to work on his power skating, on the physicality. Of course, he's not big, but still, at the end of the day, great pick at the, for them. Uh, it was not at the third, I apologize. It was at the fifth of the draft. Um, Siliger, this is a steal, guys. I thought Siliger is going to be earlier, uh, before 10 at least. Um, this one, uh, at, they got him at 12, guys. One of the best players. A uh, great, sh great shooter, great sniper, uh, great talented players on both ways. So Seliger is a great pick for them. Then they go to 25th and they get Carson Coleman. Now, Coleman is a defenseman. You have an upside down with him. Um, I think he need to work on his physicality. He have a great hands. He can move very well at the blue line. We know he play a lot of game because he played an AJ, if you don't know that. So when he, the the... The game elevate to the next level. That's why you need to have a better readjustment. But at twenty, at twenty fifth pick, I think it's a great, great pick for them. But for me, the surprise guys is a sixty nine. Zvozil, it should be about below fifty during the draft, and they got him a sixty nine. Great hockey players. Uh, he have a really upside down about his skating. I think. He's going to be, a, he could be at least a third line in NHL. I think this is a really steal for the Columbus Blue Jackets. So it will be really interesting about his development. I can't wait to see him. Um, this for the, the, the way you play with Seliger and Sozil is really where I put them, Carolina, uh, Columbus and uh, 
winner of the weekend. Let's move on to the next thing I want to talk about. And I'm talking about Carolina. Just mention about that. First of all, everything starts with expansion draft Wednesday night. They lost Morgan Geeky uh, for the for the Seattle Kraken. Then they trade um, Bain to get a second round pick. And the you can see was number 44. And then they trade the goaltender Nedenkovic to Detroit Red Wings and return they got Jonathan Bernier and a seven round pick. This one is really hard to uh, to understand, to be honest with you, but uh, they feel there was the right time for him to go and he was not uh, too much I agree with the demanding of the, his agent about his contract as a RFA. And finally, of course, like I said, they bring back uh, the veteran goaltender, Bernie. So you have still a lot of work to do on the RFA and UF3 for Carolina uh, the next couple of days. But the pick, guys, what I want to mention to you, why I put them is like, they did very well on the second round pick. They was really busy the first hour of the day, number two. They pick um, Moro, Ismo Zalmi, and Koivunen. And I think this is a great, great pick for them. Um, I like the fact they went to Finland. And Moro, um, I think at that pick at 40 is a good, good steal for them. And he have, like I said, he's a good hockey player uh, with Elmo Sanmi. So it would be really interesting, those three picks. Then they got also another one in 94. I'm not going too much about Blake or Rabides, but I want to mention uh, Reschuk at 94. It could be someone surprise everybody on that pick over there. He could be uh, play about 200 games in NHL. I would not be surprised. Um, good hockey player. Um, a little bit small, but he still have a good uh, sk skater, and he's really talented with skill and um, with hands. So it's something I think uh, Carolina did very well against on the weekend. Of course, they don't have the first round pick, and that's the reason why he made them winner. They trade to get uh, one uh, as, uh, a pick at number 44, and I think that we're helping them their, their selections on the weekend. So congratulations to Carolina. The third thing I want to talk about is the Detroit Red Wings. Guys, Steve Eisenman, we have to qualify him, one of the best GM uh, in NHL, to be honest with you. First, they lost Cholowski for the Seattle Kraken Wednesday. They trade Bernie guys for the goaltender Nikon Kovic. This is a great, great upgrade in the, between the pipes. And their draft pick, it was, they trade a lot of draft picks during the weekend. They go lower and lower by trading their picks. And I think that's what Eisenman did very well about that. First of all, they got number, not number five, but number six. They got Simon Edvinson. Great defenseman, 6'5". Listen, with him at the blue line with Zeller the next couple of years, this defensive D core of Detroit would be amazing, to be honest with you. Um, he could be at the top three at the end of the day. He still have to develop a little bit more, but great skiller, great shot, great offensive players, uh, big guy. So this was a great... Uh, for Detroit to get him. He had no problem with that one there. But the deal, what he did, he did the next two big guys. He trade to get lower, to get Sebastian Cosa, one of the best goaltender with Wallstead in the, in the draft, and he got Cosa to get their future between the pipes. Great move of Eisenman to trade for him. Then he did at the second round, the day number two, he did the same thing with a big guy defenseman. Talk about advancement. Broom is another big guy with a 6'4", great defensive player also. And that's, again, he trade to go lower to get that guy specific. That's what I'm talking about, Iserman. That's what he did with Tampa Bay. That's what he's doing right now. Now, the rest of this, you have like five more, uh, five more picks. Mazur, Savage, Nelson, and then uh, one at round number six. But again, for me, Detroit, maybe the best of the weekend uh, with Columbus, to be honest with you. Let's move on. I'm going to give you now two more teams. They, I believe they did very well during the weekend. I'm going to tell you why behind that. All right. First of all, Buffalo was active this weekend on trade uh, during the last couple of days. They trade their, their defenseman of eight years, uh, Remus Ristolinen, to Philadelphia to get a couple of picks. They trade also, finally, Sam Reynard to the Florida Panthers, where for me, they should get more for Sam Reynard. I don't know why he did that, Kevin Adams. That's maybe my interrogation about that team, too. Not they are not the winner. 
And then finally, they got four picks during the weekend. Uh, that's what they use. You can see that. Listen, 11 pick this weekend. They got the number one, Owen Power. They got um, Isaac Rosen. That's a great pick over there. Um, I think it was pick number 18. And then finally, the second day, they start with the Russian uh, Paul Tabov. And then after that, they got Kisakov. Listen, this is a great, great weekend for them. They rebuild. Uh, Buffalo right now with 11 picks for me. Uh, they deserve to be almost the winner of the weekend. And finally, the second thing I want to mention as the, almost the winner is the Minnesota Wild. You can see their pick there. And I will, listen, I'll be, I'll tell, I will tell you why. They trade with Edmonton two picks lower at the first round to get the goaltender Jesper Wallstead. And this at pick number 20 and they trade with Edmonton at this is the sale of the weekend for me. That's a great move for Bill Guerin. Then at 26, they go with another great player, Carson Lambos. He could be about, on, on my draft pick, it was about 17-22. That's a great selection. And then round number 254, uh, Jack Peart. I think that's a great. And you can see the next, the last couple of picks they got. But overall, Minnesota have a great weekend I think they do well. I think now they have to focus on the Capri Sov. They signed a couple of, you know, a couple of players, uh, RFA, they got on their team with Ericsson, RF, uh, EK. So I think that they, they are getting better, and then they'll figure out with Fiala. Uh, Fiala. But uh, look, Bill Guerin deserves that part. Now we're going to move on to the loser of the weekend. And this is about the, the way they, they select their players for me. The first Ottawa senator, listen, a lot of respect for the pick number 10, Paolo Boucher. Great hockey player, all right? Great for check, uh, work hard, great heart. He will do everything for his, for his team. Great teammates, right? But pick number 10, with the skill he has, the talent he has on the skill side, I don't think so. He should be number 10. I think they, they miss completely. They could have Cole Selinger at that pick over there. And at this one, they go maybe have some remorse from Pierre Dorian about that one over there. This is a difficult one to accept that one over there. And return, you can see on the right is the player they could get. And after that, number 39, they got Austin Chuck. Good one. But he could get also Francisco Pinelli, where I believe Pinelli should be about 35, 30. Uh, during that draft, he got 42. Then finally, Ben Roger, another pick at 49. But look what they did not pick. Pierre Lorient, Ben Rins, and Nose. Just give you an idea for me why Ottawa, for me, did not do well this weekend. And um, now the time will tell us, but for me, Ottawa is the thing to us. Then I'm going to give you two things right now. That's complete the video. And this one is because of selection, what I did not end the move. Um, first of all, is the Montreal Canadian with the selection 31, uh, Logan Mayo. I don't want to talk about the case of Mayo. I don't want to talk about the human being, the players. But I don't want to talk also about what he did. And I, I'm, I hope the victim, she's going to be okay. It should be all right whatsoever is going to be for the rest of her life. But I want to talk about the Montreal Canadiens, Mike Bergevin and the Trevor Timmons in the organization Montreal Canadian, where they select the players, where they request to not be draft during the draft NHL 2021. He wants to have that kind of the reset himself to become and to learn from that mistake. And that's what he requests before the draft. And the Montreal did not listen to him and they pick him. I understand their statement after they, they pick him for Montreal Canadiens, but for me, it's not good enough, guys. Uh, they should let him go. Sometimes it's not about the, the to advantage of the get the best player. Sometimes it's about the human being, the person. And for me, that's the most important thing. So for me, I have to put, I, I love the Montreal Canadiens. You know I'm a big fan, but I'm realistic. I, on, I'm always honest. And for me, the, the, I'm very disappointed about the fact Montreal select Logan Mayo. Finally, the Edmonton Oilers. This, guys, Ken Allen. Wow. Talk about a bad, bad weeks at the shop. 
he had a bad week at the shop. First, he traded for Duncan Key. He gave two assets for him, Caleb Jones and the picks. And the next day, he could get Rand Sutter for nothing. Then, he did not resign Adam Lawson, lost to the Kraken. And finally, he had a chance to make maybe for the next 10 years, maybe the future of the goaltender between the pipes to, dress, to, to pick Jesper Wallstead. What he did, he traded his pick to Minnesota to get an extra pick later and let it go Wallstead. Now, he picked Burgo from Schoengen. I have no problem with the kids They're from Schoengen, Burgo, good hockey player. But now tell me what the Edmonton don't they need a goaltender. They just signed a veteran, Mike Smith, at 41 years old, for $2.2 million. I, I don't get it, guys. I really don't get Ken Olin right now. Talk about the best GM, Iserman, won this week, for being honest with you. Ken Olin was one the really the struggle a lot to, on, my, on my eyes, to be honest with you. So um, this con conclude, guys, the... My winner and the loser of the weekend NHL Draft 2021. Uh, please give me your comments about the video. Tell me what you think about what I said today. And I look forward to seeing you next time. But before we leave, of course, we have to remind you, you have greatness inside of you. Have an amazing, great day, everybody. Bonne journée, mes amis. On se reparle un peu plus tard pour un autre video of the Hockey Nation live show.